Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. We're going to be looking at the art of visual production scheduling with Jake from Nettronic. We've had quite a few people sign up for this webinar. We don't want to waste any time this morning. Just want to tell you real quick, if you have any questions, type them into that question box. I will get them called out for you. Also, this and all of our webinars we do record, so you can see this recording up on our website later today. That's Inovia.com. So, Jake, without further ado, I'll hand it right over to you. All right. Thanks, Abby. And, uh, yeah, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Um, like Abby just said, we're going to be looking at the art of visual production scheduling. Um, I actually was able to give this a very similar presentation this a couple weeks ago uh, at Anovia's conference, so that was a lot of fun. So for those of you that were there, maybe this will be a follow-up, and if not, then I'll give a little introduction here. Um, so it'll be a pretty short webinar today. We're going to do about 30 minutes. Uh, first, I'll just introduce myself a little more, and then I'll introduce Netronic, and we'll jump right into the visual production scheduler uh, and a demo. And then finally, we'll leave a little bit of time at the end there for questions. And if there's any questions, uh, questions that I don't get to today, I will certainly uh, get your contact information and I will get an email out to you uh, trying to answer those questions the best I can. So without any further ado, uh, a little bit about myself. So uh, I actually, Netronic is based in Germany, so I'm, I'm presenting to you guys from Germany. It's 5 p.m. over here right now, so good morning to you guys. And uh, almost 40 years, so since 1975, uh, really with core competencies around interactive Gantt chart and, and, and Gantt chart technologies. So if you think about that as the roots of a tree being our, our tacit knowledge and our expertise that we've built up, we're kind of working up into the trunk where originally we would take these Gantt chart components that were built specifically for software developers, we would then sell them further to software developers who would then develop them, develop them into final applications. Um, more recently, however, we've uh, been able to take the, the knowledge gained and turn that into strategic product lines. Specifically, uh, the one today we're looking at is the Visual Scheduling Suite. So that's specifically from Microsoft's Dynamics NAV. NAV Nav, I switched that a little bit. So um, we can see here that I moved now from Visual Scheduling Suite uh, kind of into a zoomed in view of what it is. So you can see it consists of three products. Um, we have our visual production scheduler, which we're obviously looking at uh, our production orders and the capacities, and we're going to take a look at that today. Then we're going to be, uh, we also have our visual jobs scheduler, in which, uh, for those of you that are familiar with the mo jobs module in NAV, uh, we, we take a, a very, um, provide a face to the hierarchy that lives in Dynamics uh, Nav for jobs. So you'll be seeing your jobs, job tasks, and job planning lines along with resources. And finally, you also have a visual service scheduler, which is a visual dispatch board where you can actually drag and drop your service orders into uh, your, allocate them to specific resources in your dispatch board. So if anybody has any needs that maybe also fit into jobs and services, we will be doing further webinars with Anovi on those, or you can reach out uh, to your Anovia contact about those and then get in touch with me and I'm happy to show those as well. But uh, for today, we're going to stay with uh, production. So uh, what is it? Why is it used? So what we're going to see today is a visual face to the information you have living in NAV. So the products that we have for Microsoft, Microsoft Dynamics Nav, NAV, um, are not requiring any changes to your standard nav. So when you're implementing an electronic visual, uh, visualization add-in, you're not changing any of your data. We're just fully integrating in with the information you have living there, and we're providing a visual front end to it. Specifically, we're, we're going to be showing your production orders, the order lines, your capacities. You're going to be seeing the utilization of your different work and machine centers, and then you're going to be able to see where you might have bottlenecks or uh, timing issues. So you'll see if a production order is late, or how you're fitting in with regards to your intended completion date. Um, really what we're trying to do is get a more, gain more transparency. So understand conflicts and dependencies. 
um, and being able to give you the ability to take not only just an action for the sake of making uh, taking an action, but also making a, a, an action that makes the most sense, an appropriate action. So obviously this will then re lead to, uh, to overall better reaction time, better types of reactions, and more operational agility on the whole. So like I said before, we'll see this in just a second, but we're going to see your production orders, the production order number. We're going to see the work in machine centers. We're going to see the routing that you have in NAV shown in the individual production scheduler. We're going to see the allocations of your work by work and by machine center. And we're going to see your total capacity usage across all of your work and machine centers. All right. So without any further ado here. So now I'm in my nav role center. And uh, to I like to start in this screen first to give you that sense of full integration. So from my role center, I'm going to navigate. I could type it right up in here in my visual production scheduler, but I want to show you guys where it lives. So I'm, I'm navigating to my departmental menu. And you'll see here I'm going to go to my manufacturing, my manufacturing module. OK, and before I go to my visual production scheduler, you see I have here under my execution list items, my planned, my firm planned, and my released production orders. So these are what we're going to be providing a visual front end for inside the VPS, the visual production scheduler. So let me go ahead and just open up the VPS. All right, so <clears throat> I've opened the VPS. You can see it's a standard nav page which is broken down into three parts. You have your role center on the left, which I can collapse now. I'm not currently using it. I have a menu ribbon across the top. So this is a standard nav menu ribbon that can be uh, customized. But now we have icons that are specific to the visual production scheduler. And of course, I have my interactive GAN chart here taking up the main portion of the screen. Now. Like we just saw, we have our planned, our firm planned, and as I scroll down here, our released production orders. And you can see that they're now grouped and color-coded according to their status. So that's what we're seeing on the left-hand side on this vertical axis. And then as I, I look across my horizontal axis here, this is my, this is my time frames, so my time scale, time span. There's multiple names for it, but it's the it's the, the amount of time that you've defined to look at in your manufacturing plan, in your, in your schedule. And this plan is based off of the working date. So we're predicating this off of this working date, which uh, in essentially most likely in production will be today's date. So anything taking place to the left of this line, so finding itself to the left of this line is going to be in the past, anything to the right in the future. Okay. And you'll see that this This time span can be adjusted here under my date formulas. So depending on what your planning horizon is or how you plan your manufacturing, you can adjust this time span to be in terms of days, uh, weeks, months, years, whatever you need it to be. And there are, further, there are further features here that I can show you in just a second. But to keep moving forward, you see that I can use my mouse to scroll to the right or to the left. And now what I'm doing, like I said, is I'm moving either further back or further forward in the production schedule. Now, also, if I take my mouse and I have a wheel on my mouse, so the mouse wheel, I can hover over top of any, any given day, and I can accomplish the same right and left dragging here at the bottom. But I can hover over any given day. So let's say I want to look at the 30th of January. I am just going to go ahead and zoom in with my mouse wheel. So now I'm zooming in. And now what you see what we're doing is we're actually increasing the granularity. So we're getting we're adjusting the resolution here on the screen, and we're going to get a more granular, a more detailed look at our production plan. So now I'm going in in terms, I'm in 15 minute intervals, and I can go down as far as five minute intervals. And we have made modifications for our customers. So we, I have a customer that actually works in seconds. Uh, they need to plan, they need to see it down to the second. So it's not part of the standard, but it can be done. So if, if, you, if you need that, that amount of granularity, uh, it is certainly achievable. 
Now, something further I'd like to just point out, you see that when I hover over top of these, uh, of these production order operations that make up the production order, you get this tooltip text, so this text box that pops up. Now, this text box is giving you all of the most relevant information about that production order and about that operation. And one of our new, one of our newer, newer features, I would say, is uh, the ability to kind of configure this tooltip. So you'll see here, I can actually go in to the different pieces of what this, of what this tooltip has. Not only is tooltip in this just one view, but I can do it for every single one of my layers. So for the on the work center, on the machine center, in my next view, which we'll look at in a second, I can see okay, in the in the view that I'm looking at, these are all the fields in standard NAV that I'm choosing to show in that tooltip. So if I wanted to if I wanted to add additional fields, I can certainly add those in. Of course, it'll create a bigger tooltip, but it's very relevant to me to see that information. I need to see it. You know, on the uh, vice versa, I can also remove certain fields if it's too much data. So again, we're trying to take the information you have in standard nav, cre create that visual front end for you, and being able to kind of cut and you know cut and form a scheduler that really fits to the information that's most relevant to you to kind of give you that agility. Same thing applies here. Oops, excuse me, that was the tooltip I want to label. Same thing applies here on the bar label. So these are this is what I'm currently showing on the bar label. So I already know the status. Actually, what interests me more uh, is probably going to be the quantity. So I'm going to go ahead and select quantity. And now you'll see right on the bar label, instead of seeing the status here now, and I can do more than three, um, instead of seeing the status here now, I'm seeing the quantity associated with that operation and that production order. All right, so let me just go ahead and uh, expand out a production order to give you a sense of what it looks like. So I've now expanded out this production order line, 10, 10, 0, 2, And you'll see on the schedule, so we have white, gray, white, gray. The white is working time, and the gray is non-working time. So you can see that when a when an operation begins during working time and then runs through to a point where it's going to run through non-working time and finish, for example, on the next day or at the next working time, we fill in the operation with this white interior. And that's to give you a sense of, okay, I, I see here really, really quite easily that my operation 10 is going to start here a little after 2, so it looks like around 3 o'clock on Monday, and it's going to finish here on Tuesday. And now, like I said, this is the routing that's living in NAV. So I, I start here with operation 10 at my assembly department. I then come down to my drilling machine in operation 20, 30, and then 40. And then finally, I'm ending up here at Mike Siemens at operation 50 uh, and my final, my final operation of the production order. So to give you a sense of that integration, um, I can take a double click on any of those operations anywhere in the schedule and then I can be taken right into my production order card. So this is the production order card, standard NAV, that corresponds uh, to what we're seeing in the schedule. So like we said before, um, the routing that you have, and if you're working in production already with NAV, this is already familiar to you. This is your production order routing card for this production order. This is what we're showing already inside the visual production scheduler. So the big benefit here, other than the fact that you can just double click and go right into your nav data, is that there is no real learning curve here because the schedule is showing what you already know in what is in NAV, and that's our goal here. All right, so let's just, uh, for the sake of time here, start moving some stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to move this first operation to a later point in the schedule, and you'll see as I'm doing that, a couple things are happening. Firstly, all of my successive operations are moving along with it, and that's because here under my setup, I have actually a setting here where I can choose to auto schedule with zero buffer time my predecessors and successors. So I have that currently set in my schedule. Depending on how you plan and how you schedule, you can turn these functions on or off. Um, so something you can play with. And there's tons of functionality here that well anybody can get into if they want to ask me for a more in-depth demo. So we have also this red border coming up around our operations, and this red border is letting me know that I've made a change in the schedule, but I haven't yet committed that change back into standard MAV. So another uh, big benefit of working with a, <clears throat> excuse me, a visual scheduler 
that's integrated is that I can simulate what's going to happen uh, on my production order with regard to the timing, with regards to the capacity, with regards to the material availability. However, I don't need to then commit that directly back into NAV to see what will happen. So I haven't yet committed these changes back to standard NAV. If I did, for example, decide to save this data, then my red borders would disappear. Same thing goes here for this red cross hatching that came up. You'll see that now this is here letting me know that this black diamond, which indicates my intended completion date, is now before. So I've now moved beyond my intended completion date. So we don't create a hard stop there in the sense that you can't move it to a later point because it could most definitely be the case that you need to move it to a later point in the schedule. However, we do offer these visual warnings to give you that, that aid as a planner to know, okay, okay, now I've moved this to a point where it's now beyond the intended completion date. However, if I do go and save this then in the schedule, based off of whatever buffer time I have set in production, my, my intended completion date will now adjust once I save it and commit it back. So back to the, uh, the, the double click into NAV. Let's just look a second on my work center, the assembly department. So I've now gone into my assembly, de uh, assembly department work card, work center card. And now you can see that here at my work center card for assembly department, I have a capacity defined of three. And this is the capacity that's being shown here at the bottom of the screen. So you can see as I scroll across the screen, I can, I can see in real time the capacities on each of these work and machine centers. And I can see where on certain machine centers, such as Mike Siemens here, there might be an overcapacity. So if I look at the bottom of my screen right now, I can see that it looks like Mike Siemens has a, a conflict occurring right here because you can see my daily capacity for Mike Siemens is at one. I can see where the gray fills up to meet his capacity at that time, and I can also see where red occurs where there's an operation conflicting for another production order. So in this case, I can see when that capacity issue is occurring. However, I can't resolve that from this view. So in order to do that, we're going to jump into what's called a resource view. Now, before I do that, um, something just occurred to me that I didn't, sh I didn't talk about yet. So just digressing for one moment here, we see that I have this white, gray, white, which is the working time, non-working time. I can also hide the work-free periods. So if I hide the work-free periods, it's going to hide what's called all the shared working time. So for example, weekends when there is no production happening, in the case that your production functions in the way that weekends are totally free for every work and machine center. Now if I do hide work-free periods, you can see that my assembly department still has some free time under, and that's because my machine department is working on a two-shift calendar, whereas my assembly department is on a one-shift calendar. So we're taking into consideration your calendar settings in your manufacturing plan in NAV. So back to my uh, back to my capacity conflicts and switching views. Like I said, I'm now in my my production order view, which is my time centric view. So in this view, I'm really concerned about the timing around production. So will I complete my production orders on time? Okay, and now. If I wanted to switch gears a little bit here as a planner and see, okay, where do I have conflicts occurring, I could then move in here to what's called my resource view, in which case I'm seeing my work and my machine centers on the left-hand side, and I can see on which production orders and on which production orders uh, operations they're working inside the Gantt chart. So here I can see which, uh, on which production order I was selected in the previous view. I can see that it looks like uh, these two production order operations are conflicting with one another at the moment, and these are both planned production order operations. Um, so in terms of priority of which one to move, I need, as the planner, need to know which one of those uh, I would like to be able to shift. So I basically have two options as the planner within the visual scheduler to resolve this issue. I can either, one, take this and make a horizontal shift to the left or to the right, now, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see my load capacity adjusting with it. Um, now, if I, didn't, if I did not want to adjust the timing around this production order, there's a second option, of course, and that is in the case that I have alternative machine centers, in this case, I can see that Brian Walton has free capacity at the same time, which is right underneath Mike Siemens. What I can also do then is I'm actually just going to shift this production order 
operation down here to Brian Walton and I'm going to drop it down into Brian Walton and now you can see what I've done is I've actually I've actually changed the routing on that production order so again I haven't saved this yet back in to NAV however I have now simulated the change in routing and if I did save this back to, to, NA, to NAV then it would change the routing on that production order now as a further <clears throat> as a further uh, aid in order to help you understand and manage your entire schedule you can also switch to what's called your histogram or load capacity view and what the load capacity view is doing for you is it's giving you a complete glimpse uh, of your total production so you can see here that I can see where I have overloads occurring I can see where I have free capacity where I could increase production and this view is a little different uh, than the others in the sense that it is a static view it's not a drag and drop but what it's doing is it's giving that overall glimpse uh, at your at your total production Okay, now there are further features inside the visual production scheduler. So for example, if I wanted to create a, a, a snapshot, if you will, so let's say I wanted to look at the week of uh, Monday the 30th uh, to Friday the 3rd of February, I'm going to do what's called a print preview. I'm going to get a suggestion from the production scheduler, but luckily I can, uh, I can plan my own, my own schedule here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this week that I wanted to look at. So I think it was this week here. So I'm going to define this new time scale. I'm going to apply that. I'm just going to fit it to one page. And now what I'm doing is I'm getting a snapshot of my load capacities across my entire production. So I could create this as a PDF. I could um, print this out and take it with me to a meeting, for example. And this is not limited to just this one view. You can do this also in the resource view and the production order view that I showed as well. Okay, um, of course, it could be the case that you want to activate certain filters. So let's see, uh, what do I have? Yeah, let me just, just deactivate this one. So in the case that I wanted to filter, for example, on a, uh, on a certain work center, in this case, I want to filter and just see all the work that's flowing through the assembly department. I'm going to set a filter uh, on this work center, on the assembly department. Now I've configured that filter. I'm going to activate that filter. And now as I as I flip through my three views, I'm only seeing the work that is flowing through the assembly department. And what's nice about this is this is called a view filter. So you're able to filter on the screen uh, without losing the, the data behind. So what it means is that I can filter and, and focus on what's important to me. However, I'm still, I still have the underlying data that makes up the entire schedule. So I've actually pulled all of my data in uh, to the schedule however I'm just filtering on my individual data and you can also set what's called a data filter in which you only pull certain data into the visual production scheduler and if anybody wants to learn more about that I'm certainly happy to talk about that more uh, later however for viewing filter purposes this is uh, it's nice to be able to filter on whatever you need to be able to look at so let's try another one um, so I filtered on that work center let's say I wanted to uh, do it by production order line and I want to do it by status and I just want to look at my released at the moment. So now I've selected all of my released production orders. Um, and now you can see in my resource view, I'm only seeing the released. I can tell that because of the color. And I can also just see it by the by the, everything that's you know, in my tooltip, in my bar label. If I move to a different view, you'll see again, I'm only looking at the released production orders being shown here. And again, right now this is a, this is a, a one filter at a time capability. However, we're looking at bringing in multiple filters so you can save maybe your favorites, for example. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump back into my presentation for just one second and try to finish up there with that. Here we go. All right, so just as a quick summary, um, just trying to be aware of the time here. So, so what we saw again was a, a production order view 
which provides you that real-time data for your NAV manufacturing schedule. You see, a, you see a, th a second view, the resource view. So in that first view, it's really time-centric. We're really concerned about the timing around uh, your production. In that second view, okay, so you've, you've looked at the timing and you can actually see, okay, I have a couple capacity issues that have to do with production. However, I uh, need to be able to resolve those capacity issues. You can jump into your resource view. Uh, and finally, you have that, that load capacity view, which gives you that full glimpse at production. Okay, and then of course, uh, like I said before, you're able to then use it to uh, resolve those capacity conflicts and basically gain that, that additional transparency you didn't have previously. And walking hand in hand with that transparency, um, it's important to note everything I was showing you today was what's called a planner license. So everything that you could do in the schedule as far as saving and making changes, that's something that a planner could do. And when you're, when you're purchasing an electronic package, uh, it comes in terms of planner licenses as well as viewer licenses for the .NET add-ins for the Windows client. There's also web clients that are a little different, but for the, for the, uh, for the Windows clients for the .NET, there's also viewers in which the viewers can then view the schedule. They can filter, but they can't actually make changes on any of the data. So in the sense that you have a planner working uh, scheduling, you can have multiple people down on the shop floor which are then filtering through their specific work on the schedule without actually changing anything to the schedule. They can update and refresh it, but they can't actually make changes, just for clarification. Um, so it's a little bit of a kind of what's to come roadmap. Uh, you can see here that we are further developing the JavaScript client that I talked about uh, currently. So currently the JavaScript client is really, really nice. I encourage you guys to check it out if you're interested. Um, but there is certain functionality such as printing that we're looking at still getting worked in. So at the moment you can't print in it, but we want to bring that in uh, soon. Um, for the VPS, the one I showed today, we want to look at being able to customize the table on the left-hand side of the chart. So that, that, that configurability that I was showing you guys within the tooltip, you want to be able to bring that same configurability into the left-hand side where you're seeing the production orders and the production order numbers. We want, to sh we want to visualize your setup, run, wait, and move times. So what it means is that obviously you have different, you have different uh, work, you know, not only work types, but also different types of timing going, occurring in a production schedule. And we want to be able to visually show you what, what each piece of the operation is happening at what time. And like I stated earlier, we have definition of new filters, which you can save and then apply when needed. So if you're a planner and you want to save your favorite three or four filters, um, you can do that as well. All right, so try to keep it pretty succinct here. I think we have maybe like two minutes. Uh, Abby, got anything? I do. Uh, this is a two-part question. Can you download only specific work centers into the scheduling tool, and can two people work on different work centers at the same time? Yeah, so um, you can you can filter in. So what I was saying about the data filter before, you can data filter in only certain work centers into the visual scheduler. Um, so if you were only wanted to focus on two work centers, for example, you could filter those work centers in. Yes. And then, yes, two people can work on the same schedule at the same time. However, we are working on kind of enhancing and further, I would say, bettering the multi-user uh, situation. So let's say in the case that you have two planners working simultaneously on the schedule, the scheduler is going to be saving the, the, the most recent change that the, most la the, 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 the planner made who was most recently working in the schedule. So there, at the current moment, there is no rule that says, you know, if this person makes this change and this person makes this change, then one overrides the other, per se. However, if they're both working at the same time, whoever makes the more recent change and saves, that'll be the information committed to NAV. So also the multi-user ability is something we're really working on and trying to enhance. Generally speaking, there's only one planner working on the schedule at one time. There may be two planners that make up the first shift, second shift. So, um, so yeah, at the moment, two people can work simultaneously, yes. So I think that kind of answers that question. Okay. Uh, which versions of NAV are supported by the VPS? Yep. Good question. Uh, so anything from 2009 R2, beginning with 2009 R2. So anything from 2009 R2 up, I would say. Or too recently. Yeah. Fantastic. And one last question. Mm -hmm. Is the VPS only for Windows client or is there a web client available as well? There's a web client also. It's really nice. So actually, I mean, um, 
if, if interested in the web client, please reach out to your to whoever your Novia lead is, uh, whether it be Abby or somebody else, and then we'll we'll do a demo. I can do a separate demo on the web client as well. But there is a web client, yes. Great. Well, with that, we are done with questions and thirty minutes exactly, Jake. Perfect timing. Yeah, no, it worked out. Um, but I really appreciate everybody's time. Thank you very much. And thank you, Abby, for hosting this. Thank you, Jake. And just a reminder to everybody, we'll have the recording up by the end of the day on Anovia.com. And we hope to see you at our next webinar. All right, guys. Thank you very much.